Hi, Angie. It's Tracy from the agency. I have good news. The job's come up, and it's a big one, just like you wanted. It's a long drive, southwest, right in the middle of bloody nowhere. But it's just one elderly gentleman living on a farm. Early dementia symptoms, so it's all pretty standard. You'll need to do some light cooking, but nothing too crazy. You know the drill. His regular care is off sick, and he needs someone to keep an eye on the poor chap until she gets back. I'd go myself. It sounds like a lovely holiday in the country, but, you know, kids, and I'm stuck in the office, as always. But you'll love it there. I'm sure you will. Uh, Angie? I can't. Something's come up. I'm sorry. Last two months have been the best months of my life. Will you marry me? A nurse falling in love with a patient? God, no. Marrying a dying man. I never understood why she did it. Japan? Are you kidding me? Of course I want to go. It, it's only like the best place on earth. I'm afraid the patient is not responding to the treatment. We should start planning palliative care. April. That's perfect. We're going to see the cherry blossoms. James really shouldn't be traveling in his current condition. I'm sorry, but I can't allow it. It's all right. We'll go once I'm done with this <sighs> fucking keeper. Angie. I'm sorry. He was... James was a great guy. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. <gasps> it's a nasty cop, Angie. <coughs> Should go have that locked out. Are you okay? You look a bit pale. Everyone was sorry for you, but no one really said anything. I have bad news, Mrs. Weber. Worst, I'm afraid. It's lung cancer. Late stages. But 
didn't her husband die of cancer last year? Both of them? What are the odds? Maybe if we found it sooner. But at this point, it's so far gone, there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry, Mrs. Weather. We cannot cure your cancer. You have about six minutes left to answer. Tracy, I've changed my mind. I'll take that job. That's great. I'll be honest. I thought people would fight each other over those few weeks in Devon, but guess what? Nobody wants to go. The clean country air, the double pay. I mean, what's not to like? But it's all right. I've got my best nurse on the job now. It's all good. I, I know things have been hard for you. I'm glad you've changed your mind. It'll be good for you to go out there and, um... Tracy, this is probably my last job. I just need to save up some money and then... I want to travel for a bit. Go to Japan. See the cherry blossoms. Well, okay. You've not had a holiday abroad for years. By all means, go. But you'll be back, right? I'll let you know when I get back home. Bye. You must be Angie then. Come in, come in. Oh, you're a lifesaver. Dad's regular carer was in a car accident recently. Nothing life-threatening. But she's had some pins and screws put in her knee and it'll be months before she can get back to work. Now, I would have loved to take Dad with me to the city. I could have him close to where I work. I'd look after him myself. But he won't have it, the stubborn old fool that he is. Still, he's lived in this house his whole life. He was born just there in the other room. He might as well spend what time he has left here on the farm where he's happy, right? Yes. It's a beautiful place indeed. It is. I can appreciate it more now. But to be honest, for a young girl growing up here wasn't exactly exciting. Not everyone was born to be a farmer, right? You should meet Dad. Come with me. He's in the lounge. After you. Meet Angie, Dad. She's gonna look after you until Joyce gets back. Hello, dear. Hi. Oh, sorry. 
Maybe that's from the office. I should take it. Hello? Hi, Sam. No, I shan't be long. I'm just showing the house to that new nurse. I'll be back before five, half past tops. Ugh, oh, I know. He always does that. Yeah. See you soon. Ta-ta! Oh, I'm really strapped for time today, I'm afraid. I'll just explain everything quickly and leave you to it. I'll need you to cook for George. He prefers the good old classics, nothing too complicated. The truth is, he'd just eat sandwiches every day if he could. But don't let him do that. I'll leave you a list of his favourite meals. Anything that's there, just help yourself. Here's Dad's bedroom. He might occasionally need help with this or that, but on most days he still manages to dress on his own. And here's the bathroom he uses. Again, just watch him to make sure he doesn't slip on the tiles and break a zip or something. Dad likes to be called George. You can take him for a walk sometimes if the weather's okay, but he prefers to spend most of the day here watching TV. That means you'll have plenty of time left for yourself. There's lots of old books in the house if you ever get bored, and an old computer in the office. But I'm not sure if it works. And finally, my old bedroom. That's your space now, so make yourself at home. Just don't let the cats in. They get too cozy indoors and they never want to leave. <laughs> Hello? I've left a little guidebook on the kitchen table for you. Make sure to check it every now and then, you know, when you get stumped. And please, keep a close eye on George. I know he seems fine most of the time, but he does have his moments.
Would you like a blanket? Well, that's very sweet here, dear. But no, thank you. I'm quite warm. Put that stuff on, will you? I ain't got fanny over that wagon for a target. I will, too. You hungry? Well, I don't know. Oh, I, uh, I suppose I could always do with a nice sandwich if you have one.
Time for bed. Night night, my dear. Good night, George. Hello again, little one. I'm very curious about that key on your neck. What's it for? Would you mind if I borrowed it? Ah! Kitty? Don't leave me alone down here. Do we really want to play hide-and-seek? Come on, Kitty. Where are you? There you are. Are you trying to tell me something, Kitty? Are you friends with these rodents? Is that why you brought me here? Rest in peace, old guys. Two lovers sleeping forever in a shared grave. I wish I was this lucky. I'll probably just have worms with me in the coffin, munching on my carcass. And spiders? Horrible fucking spiders. 
God damn it. I'm really not ready for any of this. This shouldn't be happening. I don't want to die. I'm telling you this because you're a cat. And cats know about these things. Thank you, darling. I'm only afraid of dying because I haven't lived yet.
Is this the end? I give myself to you. I'm only afraid of dying because I haven't lived yet. Is this the end? I give myself to you.
I'm only afraid of dying because I haven't lived yet. This is the end. I give myself to you. Hello? Yes, yes, hello. I know you're in a hurry, but please, I'm almost done here. I'll be with you as soon as I finish this last portion. You, a smoker? Fancy a smoke while you wait. Go ahead, that ashtray is there for a reason. You want me to smoke in a restaurant? I really wouldn't go as far as calling it a restaurant, darling. <laughs> Actually... You know what? A cigarette sounds great. I will have one. 
That's all right. Job's done. Now, how may I help you? Is there someone in your basement? Yes, well spotted. It's Ruby, my girlfriend. She's always there. Are those chains? Is she chained to the wall? Of course she is. Safety first. That's my motto. You can't do that. No, see, you don't understand. It's all mutually agreed. It's all good. She actually signed a form letting me do that. Wanna see? Um, maybe later? I know, it looks a bit odd. But I've been doing this for a while. And trust me, the chains are necessary. Especially since the Destiny incident. Oh, Destiny. I'll never forgive myself for that. She has quite an appetite for a girl. I know. We're already on a third roll of meat today. Where does it all go? So, she just sits down there... Eating kebabs all day. Yes, she does enjoy my daughter kebab quite a bit. All my girls do. We have a strict feeding routine here that brings real results. That's what they sign up for, and that's what they get. No fooling around with bread or salad. Just the good old meat. She's... um... making some strange noises. She just gets a bit agitated when she's hungry, that's all. But now that she's fed, it should stop soon. Well, for a couple of hours anyway. Well, uh, as long as she's okay down there. She's more than okay. That basement is probably the safest place on Burnhouse Lane, if you ask me. That's why I don't go out so much anymore. But what do I know? Don't mind me. I'm just a guy who makes kebabs. <laughs> Burnhouse Lane. How did I end up here? Judging by the smell, you crawled out of the sewer. No offense. But I was in a house in the countryside. No cities around for miles. Just hills and fields. And then... Listen... I don't want to be rude, but that's just none of my business. Occasionally people like you stop by this place. They always ask questions, try to understand. They say, where are we? Where's everyone else? Why me? But I don't have any answers, and I'm not even interested in finding them. I'm just a kebab guy from Burnhouse Lane, and for $5.99, I'll make you a nice donut kebab. Do you want one? I'll eat when I get home. What's your name? Darling, I'm just an ordinary kebab guy. You really want the bother of remembering my name? Yes. Well, you can call me Omar. But I bet you won't even remember that tomorrow. Shit, you won't even remember that in 20 minutes. And what if I do? Then you get one large doner kebab on the house. <laughs> but really, I just don't care. So there are other people like me who found this place? 
I see them sometimes, not very often. It's funny, but you all smell the same. No offense. What do you mean? Smell of what? Sickness. You mentioned someone called Destiny. Who's that? Destiny. She was... She was the love of my life. Lived down in the basement, same as Ruby now. But Destiny... Oh, Destiny made my heart beat like a drum. You know, boom, tada boom, tada boom. So special, so beautiful, so big. She was able to eat twice the meat other girls could. But then one day... Let me guess. She ate too much and exploded. No, no. She got so big and strong that one day she just smashed the hatch, climbed the fuck out, and went for me like a raging bull. I believe her intention was to consume me like a delicious morsel. So anyway, she surely would have torn me to pieces if I hadn't crawled in the freezer to hide from her. Then she left, and I've not seen her again. It's kind of your own fault. It's all these kebabs. I'm not surprised she'd lost her mind. You don't understand. She loved it. She begged me to feed her. But by the end, I wasn't able to satisfy her cravings for meat anymore. It was never enough, and she was always hungry. What do you think will happen to her now? She roams the park nearby. I hear screaming sometimes, late at night. That's her, feeding on some unlucky passers-by. My poor darling Destiny. There's not much of humanity left in her, if any at all. Well, I'm not staying here. How do I get back? You sure you want to go? I could put you up with Ruby, if she won't mind. That's very kind of you, but... There's someone at home who I'm supposed to be watching right now, and he might get in trouble if I'm not back before dawn. I see. Well, I won't stop you then. But hey, I just remembered something that might help you. Last week, I heard cats making noise over at the old clock museum. And? Cats know things we don't. They're the only ones who can slip in and out of Burnhouse Lane whenever they want. Okay, I'll try the clock museum. How do I get there? <laughs> That's the problem, you see. You just can't get there anymore. Why not? Remember when I told you about Destiny? How she roams the park? Well, that's where the clock museum is. Right there on her feeding grounds. What if I decided to go to the park? I went past it earlier. I'm pretty sure the gate was locked. That gate's always locked, but there's a way in through the public toilets. They're right next to the park. You can take the toilet's key. There. Just bring it back later. I'll need it for the customers, and... If you see Destiny, just run. She's strong, she's aggressive, but she's also clumsy. You can dodge her if you're swift enough, but if she grabs you... I won't let her grab me. Good. I'd be sad to see your pretty face turned into Lachmajun. <laughs> I guess it's time to meet my destiny.
Hello? get help, but he didn't make it. She got him. She fucking ate him, like an animal. I saw it all, through this hole. God fucking damn it. Where's the key? Charles had it. I'm pretty sure he hid it in his chest pocket. In that case, assuming Charles is the guy in the back room with his guts out, the key must be in his murderous stomach. Along with Charles's liver and kidneys. No. Shit, no. I must get it back. I don't. I can't be here anymore. But what can I do? You want me to wait for her to shit it out? Although, on my way here, I did hear some strange noises coming from the toilet stall. What if that was her? I don't know. Just do something. Anything. Just kill her and rip the key out of her fucking stomach. I don't care. Okay. I'll find a way. I'll be back soon. You hang in there.
This is it. Smoking girl. There's a key in his stomach that I need to recover. Yes, the key. I'll get it out for you. How? See this knife? Do what you've got to do. I'll just wait over there.
Is this the key you were after? Why? Did you find more than one key in there? No, but I found a golden watch and I'm keeping it for myself. I don't care. Just give me the key. I'll see you again, smoking girl. Bye, Omar. <laughs> you did remember it! I promised I'd give you something if you do, so... Here, something to remember me by. and I'm calling from Hopedale Medical Clinic. Am I talking to Angie Weather? Yes. Okay, that's great. Um, you came to us last week to run some tests. The results are in, and... Are they okay? Dr. Matthews asked if you could come in. He'll explain everything. Wait, is something wrong? Am I ill? We don't give out this kind of information over the phone, I'm afraid. Let's arrange a visit, shall we? Can you make it this afternoon? Sorry, can you repeat? I can't hear you very well. I said... I want to help you. Draw an X on the door and come to me. What? I want to 
take a closer look. Leave me alone. Wait a second. I think you might actually have a chance. I have a good feeling about you. It's your voice I heard on the phone, isn't it? Who are you? As you can see, I'm a cat. I used to have a lovely warm home. But one day, Andrea got sick. She came to Burnhouse Lane. I followed her, and... I stayed. Where else can I go? Who's Andrea? She was my friend, of course. A long time ago. We both died in that fire, but I simply refused to accept it. Why am I here? This is where the sick come to die. Where else would you be? Are you sick too? No. I shouldn't really be here. But cats never obey the rules. Instead, sometimes I try to help poor souls like you. Because I know how to cure your cancer. This rotten sickness, slowly killing you from the inside. I can give you a fresh start. If you're willing to work for it, of course. There's no cure. There's nothing they can do. But there is something you can do, Angie. The cure's inside you. You just need to reach in and find it. But it will not be given easily. You must prove something to me first. Prove it to yourself. I'll do it. Just tell me how. I'll give you five tasks. Complete them all and you will live. First task is to bring an evil man here to Burnhouse Lane. You're going to meet him very soon. Don't let him lull you into a false sense of security, but make him follow you here instead. He won't come willingly, of course, so use the chalk you found to draw an X on the door. It'll take him straight to Burnhouse Lane if he walks through it. Here he will pay for his evil deeds. Go back now. A new day is coming. But... We'll meet again soon. But now, take the door. Go back. I believe old George will need your help.
George?
Morning, dear. Looking for Joyce. Joyce! I need to talk to her rather urgently. Is she around? Sorry, but did you just let yourself in? Well, I've been ringing the bell for quite some time. No one answered the door. That should have been a good indication to you that either no one's home, or someone's busy. I am a man of God, and God needs no invitation. Besides, George knows me well, and so does Joyce. And speaking of Joyce, where is she? I have a little business to discuss with her. Well, she's clearly not here, is she? But she's always here, looking after old George. How else would he manage the way he is these days? Oh, that Joyce, the caretaker. Yes, that's the one. Where is she? Joyce is not here. She's had a car accident. I'm here covering for her while she gets better, but it might take her a few weeks before she's able to work again. Oh, no. No, no, no. This is just not good at all. Do you want a cup of coffee? Coffee? No, I don't want no bloody coffee. Okay. Only asking. This is just... dreadful. This house has fallen on hard times indeed. Okay. Well, I'll get back to work now, shall I? It was nice meeting you. You won't throw a god's servant out into the rain like that, will you? It's pouring out there. Well, I... I'd like to look around, if you don't mind. Maybe Joyce left me a letter, a note of some kind. I don't think so. You never know. It might be worth checking. This business with Joyce is something really important to you, isn't it? What do you want from her? Maybe I can help you instead? It's... I'm afraid I'm not allowed to talk about it. I'm sure you understand that what's said in the confessional stays in the confessional. Oh, go on. I won't tell anyone. Well, in that case... Okay, I... I just wanted to buy some of those special herbs from her. She's been growing them underground in her secret place. She wouldn't show me where, only she knows. Oh. Okay, I get it. We're looking to buy some pot. Uh, sorry, just felt a little dizzy. My head's all funny. Take a deep breath, and you'll be fine. What? Trust me, I'm a nurse. I, um... What were we talking about? Morning, nurse. Morning, father. What? Another one? Who are you and how did you get in? That's just Kieran. Don't mind him. He lives on the farm and does the sheep. Quite literally, I've heard people say. Don't listen to that fool, nurse. He just likes to bully people, he does. Well, you're Welsh, right? And I've seen you around sheep. I'm a bloody shepherd. Of course I'm around sheep. We look after them. These poor creatures look absolutely terrified every time you get near them. That's exactly what I thought last time I came to your Sunday Mass, Father. And when was that, Kieran? Ten years ago? Twenty? Stop bickering, you two! I don't have time for this. I have to find George and see if he's alright. But that's what I'm trying to tell you! 
I was on my way to the sheep pen to feed my sheep, not do anything horrible, right? So I'm walking through the east yard towards the house. I'm not too happy, because it's absolutely pissing with rain out there, and I can already feel I have water in my boots. But then guess what I see? Poor old George is sitting right on top of the barn. I called out to him. I said, come on down, mate, you're going to fall. But he just blanked me. So I thought, I I can't deal with this. Because, really, I'm just here to look after the sheep. (laughs) Crazy old people are way above my pay grade. Shit. Isn't it your responsibility to keep an eye on George at all times, nurse? Leave me to the barn, Kieran. I'll deal with this. Let's all go. By the sound of it, this situation may call for some divine intervention. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on my house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. Up there! Fuck. <clears throat> Sorry. But why would he go up there? Why don't you tell us? You're the caretaker. George! Come down for goodness sake! See? Nobody listens to you, mate. And neither does George. He probably can't hear me from up there. Father Rob, any ideas? I wish the Almighty gave us angels wings at times like this. But since he doesn't, I think I'll resort to the next best thing. Which is? I'll pray for his safety, dear. I guess it's better than nothing. George done this before? I wouldn't know. I usually stay with the sheep. <laughs> I swear, if you call me a bloody sheep shagger once more. Well, I've not called you anything. But you know what they say, Kieran. There's no smoke without fire. Are you only good at climbing, Kieran? Oh no. I ain't going up there, nurse. I'm sorry. The planks are all rotten through. And those ladders? Well, they weren't built for a man of my stature. Oh, your weight. Can you just bugger off? I don't even eat much. I've got a fat gene from my mother. That makes my agility a wee low. So what? Oh, I've seen you step dancing at the village fest. No fat gene hindering you there. Fine. Last thing we need is you getting stuck on the roof as well. You're both useless. I'll get him. Good. That's what Joyce would do. Be careful up there.
Hey, lady, you try to kill me. Did you see that? This metal rod almost impaled me. Let it go, nothing happened. Can you please give us a word of warning before you start dropping heavy objects from up there? I mean, it's a close one this time. Mind your heads down there. It's about to rain potatoes. Nice view, hmm? You can see for miles from up here. Aye. Do you mind if I sit down with you? Do sure. You'll get a wet bum. It doesn't matter. I'm soaked through already. Tell me a story, George. You don't want to hear it. Yes, I do. Tell me about your life here. What was it like? Well... I've had a very good life on this farm. But... Uh, it took me a while to realise that. When I was young, I wanted to go out there and see the America that I knew from the movies. See the Wild West for myself. But, well, he never did. It used to be my father's farm, and when he passed away, he left it to me. He was an angry man, always shouted at people. Anyway, I was convinced I'd follow in his footsteps and live a, a mediocre life I never wanted, until something happened. It was the 4th of September, two years after Dad had passed away. I was on my tractor, heading up the hill to mend the fence, when I heard a crash. I stopped, suddenly. I got off, and I saw this bicycle, all crumpled up, sticking out right from under the tractor's front wheel. And I saw a lady's foot. Well, I had no idea at the time that six months later, we would marry that foot and its owner and that it would be the love of my life. Penny was her name. She was a new vet in town and the most gorgeous woman I'd ever laid eyes on. I picked her up in my arms, my heart racing, ready to rush her into hospital. But she just smiled and said, Are you George Taylor? Or are you, you have a sheep that's poorly? Would you believe she was more concerned about the sheep than herself? Bless her. She really loved animals more than anything. Luckily, she wasn't nearly as damaged as her bicycle. Just a couple of scratches and a sprained ankle, which was quite extraordinary. 
considering she'd been hit by a bloody tractor. We waited for her, with a bouquet of flowers in my right hand, <laughs> and a box of chocolates in my left, right outside the hospital. We both knew that this was meant to be. My lovely darling Penny. <sighs> I tell you, she turned my life upside down. The farm that I despised so much finally became a home. All of a sudden I couldn't care less about Wild West and the cowboys. Penny opened a veterinary clinic here. Then Sarah was born and we started a family. Life was good. But good lives don't last forever. They're always followed by the dark times. There was an accident one day. We had a lot more horses here back then. There was this one bad stallion, Derek he was called, nasty old thing. He jumped and kicked Penny suddenly while she were giving it injections. And she just flew and hit her head on the wall. She didn't die straight away. I was in the hospital with her for three days, watching the life in her slowly drain away. She was only 42, as too young to go. Too young. But hey, look at me rambling on. Oh, I didn't mean to bore you with my old man's stories. See you back at the house, dear. Hmm, that's a nice cup of tea. It'll warm you up, George. You'll be all right. Of course he'll be all right. He's a tough bloke. He wrestled bears and punched wolves back in his days. Isn't that right, George? Oh, we don't know about the bears, Kieran. Where's Father Rob? He said he was going to look around. Yeah? I bet he's snooping again. Why are you here, Kieran? What do you mean? I live here. <laughs> Not in this house, you don't. But I've known George for a long time. We're all pals. He doesn't mind. You don't mind, do you, George? Oh, I don't mind, Kieran. Well, if George doesn't mind, then neither do I, I guess. You can stay. I mean, as long as you don't sneak up on people, or, like, murder me. I won't murder you. Nah, too much trouble getting rid of the body. <laughs> Besides, let's just be friends, for George's sake. Fair enough. I'm not looking for enemies. I tell you what, I'll cook dinner for everyone first, and then we'll shoot some bottles. How about that? Oh, so you can cook too? Hell yeah, I can! I make a smash and roast lamb with Brussels sprouts and mint sauce and all. George loves it, but there's no oven in my caravan, so we'd have to cook here. I don't know, Kieran. I think we could all use a proper meal after a morning like this. But I I'm going to need some cooking wine. I doubt there's any here. George has always been a sherry kind of guy. Someone say sherry? There's a bottle of red in my caravan. Could you get it for me, please? Why can't you get it yourself? A dinner like this is a lot of work. 
I'll never make it on time if I don't get started on the vegetables straight away. Plus, ah, the old leg's hurting, like a son of a bitch. And you'll be walking that way anyway. Joyce always does, this time of day. To do what? To feed Richard some carrots. Richard? The horse. He lives in the box just outside the big barn. Have you had your breakfast yet? Because you can have this doner kebab if you want. Oh, nice. You sure you don't want it? I'm sure. <laughs> yes. All right. Nice. Ah, this will keep me going until dinner. Cheers, nurse. I'll go then. Anything else I should do while I'm there? Milk the cows? Harvest the crops? No. Just get the wine and give Richard some carrots so he can love you forever. Okay. But you better watch George while I'm gone. I won't let him out of my sight, nurse. What are you even doing here? Are you deaf? That man's gonna turn you into dinner. Run! <laughs> We're not eating, Midge. There's lamb meat in the freezer, silly. Oh, right. Then, I guess you can relax, Midge. Just don't look in the freezer.
This fine weaponry in the hands of a drunken retard. Don't you think it's a recipe for disaster? Don't be so rude. A priest shouldn't be talking like this. You want to teach a man of God how to talk now? You! A big city girl unfamiliar with our country ways. You're just a little lost lamb in the deep, dark woods. And if you don't want to end up on the wolf's table, you better start talking right this minute. Tell me, where is the lab? Is that one of Kieran's guns you're holding? This? Um, yes. Yes, it is. A custom-made double-barrel shotgun. Fine craftsmanship. It's one of a kind, this one. It fires both barrels at the same time. Okay. But why do you have it? I was looking for the lamb, and it called out to me. So I took it. You don't have a problem with that, do you? No problem. Just asking. But I asked first, and I'm afraid I'm still waiting for an answer. So I shall ask one last time, because frankly... I've had enough of this shit! It's time to spill the beans, city girl! Where's the lab?! I... Where the fuck is it? <sighs> you will confess everything! It's just a matter of time.
as well say it. But... It's just the Lord listening, and the Lord can see through your lies. <laughs> what the fuck do you want me to say? You are such a bad, dirty woman. I'm disappointed with you, Jennifer. I'm... sorry. I'll be better, Father. Oh, we both know that's just another lie. But fine, we'll do it the hard way. Since you keep asking for a rod, I shall not spare it. No, 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 no! We'll slice off the evil of you, so you are ready to accept God into your heart. Shut it down! You fucker! It 
It is the Bible that says the mouth of an adulteress is a deep pit. He who is under the wrath of the Lord was born. Only repentance can bring forgiveness to the praying soul. Of each action, of each sin, punishment. I'll give you two minutes to compose yourself, Jennifer, to think things through, and to pray. Then we shall start again. Wait, you're Jenny Wilde. 
The actress. Yeah. And who the fuck are you? You're a fucking savior, that's who I am. Oh, <laughs> good. I've been waiting for you. I think your vicar friend might be coming back any second now, so... <sighs> right. Let's get the hell out of here, shall we? Climb up that rubble? I guess. But he needs to stop bloody shooting at us. Huh. That shouldn't be a problem. He's down. One of the bricks that him right in the face. At last. So, um, as you know, I'm Jenny Wilde. <laughs> Kinda. Instantly recognizable. Obviously. And what's your name? Angie. It's nice to meet you, Angie. And thanks for saving me. It's fine. Don't worry about it. But what's an American movie star like you doing in a place like this? Oh, we just, uh, finished filming last week. I met some people, I did some parties. You know how it is. Not really. No. I need a minute to rest. I thought I was already dead. He was either gonna cut me to bits with that big fucking slicer, or turn me into a sex slave in his stupid sex dungeon. Rob's a real piece of work. He'd probably do both. Ugh. You hurt? Ugh, no. Not really. I'm asking because I'm a nurse. I can give you a quick checkup. Oh, maybe later. Uh, I'll be okay for now. You sure? You're covered in blood. I got a, a few scratches on my legs. He punched me once or twice. Smashed my poor little nose. 
But most of this blood isn't mine. That's... To be honest... I'd rather not talk about it. If you don't mind. I've... Seen some things down there that will... <sighs> last me for a lifetime. Sure. I get it. I wish I could have saved the other girl too. The one that was screaming? She was dying right in front of me. And there was nothing I could do. So I used her as bait. Fuck. Why did I do that? Hey, it's alright. It's not your fault. It's Rob that's guilty of all of this. And he'll pay for it, I swear. Do you think he's dead? Well, that would certainly sort out a lot of problems for us right now. But I doubt he is. Me too. That would be just too easy. How did you end up in the catacombs? Oh, I met Rob at a party. I think that was... Three days ago? Yeah. He must have put something in my drink, because I remember feeling dizzy. And Rob offering to drive me to a hotel. And you know... I'm a big girl. I'm well aware you don't get into cars with men you just met, because that's just asking for trouble. But he was a priest, for fuck's sake! I really didn't think he'd spike my drink, take me down to his secret lair, and try to fuck me. That man's a weasel. I had a feeling there was something wrong with him, but I ignored it. I'm not making that mistake again, so... Before we go... Yes? Tell me you're not hiding anything from me. I... Um... Fine. He didn't really drug me. He... Gave me some coke because he knew I wanted it. And we... Snorted it together in one of the bedrooms. And... Oh, I'm so sorry. I knew it was wrong, but... It's alright. I'm not gonna judge you. I just wanted to know. Huh? I, uh... I think I drifted away for a second. Uh... What did you say? It's nothing. Don't worry. Let's go. Wait. What's the plan? The church seems all locked up. We have the fence or something? Actually... I know this might seem strange to you, but there's something I want to try. You see... I think I can lead Rob into a trap. And how the hell are you gonna do that? Trust me. I have my ways. I don't normally trust... anyone, but... Alright. Ugh, it's been one crazy fucking day. Do what you gotta do. Stay here and rest for now. I'll start by getting up to the top floor. Then we'll set up the trap and attract Rob's attention. I'm pretty sure he's not far behind, looking for us.
always dark up there. After the catacombs, are we really going to be scared of a dark attic? Good point. Ugh, that's better. What is this guy's problem with young women? He thinks we're all sluts, I guess. But it's more complicated. Down in the dungeon, he wanted me to be his new mistress. Cause the old one. Well, she wasn't really up to the task anymore. I know you're hiding here. I'll find you. It's just a matter of time. He's here. It sounded like he blasted the shit out of the back door. It's okay. We have another door right here. What if he destroys it too? I don't think he will. He wants us alive so he can, you know, take us back to his sex dungeon? I ain't going back there. No way. Then let's set the trap. This seems like a good place. You destroyed half the church by the sound of it. How is Rob gonna get up here now? There's another door leading to the attic. I'm sure he has the key for it. Right. So... Uh, what happens now? Now we're about to see a magic trick. I can smell you up there! Dirty whores! You in there? Keeping merely company? How nice of you. You know, Millie had a hard time accepting Jesus into her heart. In the end, I ripped her chest open to let Jesus in. But enough of this dilly-dallying. Ladies, you'd better be ready. Your good shepherd is coming home. Stay here and wait for me. 
Jane. What? Why? I'm going after him. Of my way, you stupid! And as the wolf opened his jaws to swallow the lamb, he found there was already an even bigger wolf hidden inside the lamb. Tables turn quickly if you're not careful. And when you live a wolf's life, you've got to know there is a price for each drop of blood that you spill. Sooner or later, you'll have to pay it. Thank you, Angeline. This is the man I wanted. Your first task is completed. It's time to end it. Unless... Well... You have his gun. And a first-hand experience of being his victim. Perhaps this kill belongs to you. I'll let you choose. I've done enough. He's all yours now. Very well then. Here we are. You can stay on the farm until you get your strength back. Don't think the owner will mind. You won't even know I'm here. I need a quiet place to rest for a bit. 
I'm so tired. I know. You'll sleep soon. But take a bath first. Use the guest bathroom, just past the staircase, and in the meantime, I'll find something for you to wear and I'll bring it over. Oh, and uh, can you please make me a nice big cup of coffee? Um, yeah, sure. <sighs> Five sugars, please. Five? Okay. Just go and wash that blood off you already. One last thing, Angie. Yeah? What the hell is this dreadful thing on the table? I think it might be yesterday's dinner. This frozen lump of flesh? Yep. Well, no offense, but it doesn't look very appetizing, does it? This guy, Kieran, offered to make roast lamb yesterday. But I guess he fucked up. No shit. Never mind. At least now I know I can't rely on that lazy booger. Right. Uh, I'll go wash now. Pass the stairs, last door. You can't miss it. There. Would you come closer, please? I could be losing my mind, but did I just see a naked lady run past here a minute ago? That's Jenny. Don't worry about her. She needed a place to stay for a few days, and I've offered to help. Is that all right with you? Oh, that's fine with me. Just ask her to put some clothes on. You know, in case that vicar comes round again. Speaking of clothes, do we have anything we could give her? Well, I, uh, I don't know much about ladies' garments, dear. It's all right. I can give her some of mine. Wait, I... Uh... I still have some clothes that belong to my wife. It's a skirt and a blouse, I believe. I kept them because they were her favourite. They're in a suitcase upstairs. You sure you don't mind letting a stranger wear it? Penny uh, always had a heart of gold. She wouldn't think twice about lending her clothes to a stranger in need. Well, I'm sure of that. In that case, okay, I'll go look for it. Oh, uh, before you go, dear, uh, any chance of another sandwich? 
Oh, I waited and waited yesterday, but that roast lamb never came. Huh, I wonder why. But sure, I'll make you a sandwich in a minute. Coffee's in the kitchen. I'm just letting you know. Nice! Thank you. I won't be long. Jenny, I found some clothes that should fit you. I'll leave them here on the floor, just outside the bathroom. Thanks! I'll be out in a minute.
Well, aren't you a cutie? Living on Burn House Lane, of all places. This doesn't seem like the right home for a beautiful cat like you. Want to come with me? done this to her? A psychopath called Walter Green, who lives in the woods, not far from the farm. Walter likes to trap people, hunt them down like animals, sometimes just to slowly watch them die, but mostly to skin them alive as a sacrifice to the devil. What do you want me to do? Find Sheila and get her out of there. But do it soon. The sun sets down fast this time of year. You only have till midnight. And at night, these woods are dark. You're awake. What do you mean? I wasn't sleeping. Liar. Do you want a cupcake? <laughs> do I look like the kind of guy who'd say no to a cupcake? In that case... Here, it's all yours. Cheers, nurse. I will remember this. What's that rose slam you promised us, hmm? Well, where's the wine? You went to get it, and you never came back. I was... Ugh. It's a long story. But now that I think about it, you don't actually need red wine to make Rose Slam. You just stick the damn thing in the oven. It's that simple. Well, not the way I cook it. 
And what is your way to cook it? Let me guess. Getting pissed on George's sherry and falling asleep? I guess it's better you never actually started it because you'd probably just burn the whole place down if you did, you drunken fool. Hey! That was George's idea to open that bottle. Was it really? Because I can tell if someone lies to me, Kieran. I... Okay. Yeah, I... I'm sorry. I'm a pathetic, disgusting lump of fat. And all I want to do is drink because no one ever loved me. That's enough. I just wanted you to tell the truth. Sometimes I drink three or four bottles. And when I sleep, I wet myself and the mattress and I... I said that's enough. I'm not your psychotherapist. I don't need to hear it all. Okay. Did you see a young woman? Blonde? Late twenties? You mean Jenny? Yes. She's lovely, isn't she? Where is she? Uh, the last I saw her, she was talking to George. Right. Thanks. Is there a forest near the farm? Why are you asking? Well, I just feel like taking a walk in the woods. I want to get some fresh air, you know? You don't want to go to that forest. I mean, this is the good old countryside. There's fresh air everywhere. Maybe I like to look at the trees, yeah? Just tell me, how do I get there? Well, if you really must. There's a path leading to it in the east yard, near my caravan. I'll be there all day. Come over, and I'll show you. But... You shouldn't go there alone. Why not? I hear stories about things happening in these woods. Bad things. Horrible things. Thanks for your concern, but I can take care of myself. See you later. And don't do anything stupid. <laughs> Me? Never! I see you've met Jenny. Uh, this lovely young lass wandered in. I offered my chair to her, and she must have been very exhausted, because she just fell asleep before I could even offer her a cup of tea. Do you want me to... No, no, leave her. That's fine. As a matter of fact, I'll go find her a blanket. That's a bit chilly today.
Nurse, can I interest you in a little game I've invented? There's prizes to be won. What would I have to do? You uh, ever held a gun? Yes. Well then, I throw some empty bottles up in the air. You try to hit them before they fall. Easy. What do you say? Sure, let's try it. Three bottles, very nice. And here's the incredible second prize. What is this? It's a little sheep. Isn't it lovely? I got it at the car boot sale last year. Thanks. It'll look nice on the shelf, I guess. Do you want to try again? Sure, let's try it. Yeah! Good shot! Yeah! Whoa! Four bottles! That's my personal record. Sadly, I've only had one sheep thingy, so uh, I'll just pat you on the back this time. Don't. Do you want to try again? Sure, let's try it. Got it! Five bottles! You're amazing! Here's your special ultra rare first prize, as promised. A large caliber Desert Eagle bullet. Just one? Oh, they're quite expensive. But let's be honest, with this sort of weapon, all you need is one shot. Really? But I don't even have a Desert Eagle. Well, I'd lend you mine, but uh, you know how it is. I grow attached to these things. It's all right. I don't want it anyway. Do you want to try again? No, thanks. Here, take your gun back. I'm off to the woods. Will I get there if I keep going this way? Well, yes, but uh, you don't really want to go there, nurse. You should leave that for me to decide. Hey, Mitch. It's good to see you made it.
Hi there. Um, hi. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Arno. I'm Angie. What are you doing here? Alone? In the woods? I'm tracking the legendary Walter Green, of course. And these woods are his hunting grounds. So I've heard. But... Why do you track him? It doesn't seem like a very wise thing to do. Only if you aren't familiar with his patterns. But since I've studied Walter and his mythos for a long time, I know exactly what I'm doing. And I will not let him kill me. What is this shack? The Satanist Club? Not quite. It used to be a lumberjack's cabin back in the day, but it's been abandoned since 2013. You see, that's when all those grisly murders started to happen in the area. Jeffrey Brand, the lumberjack, was one of the first they found. Where? Here? Here indeed. If you look closely, you can still see his blood on the windowsill. Right. Lovely. And what about all those satanic drawings? Ah, yes. It's widely believed that Walter Green worships the devil. He makes them all over the forest, as well as little shrines to Satan, built with bones and feathers. They usually mark spots where he killed people. I'm looking for a small chapel with a creepy doll pinned to it. Please, I really need to find it. Any chance you saw it? Yes, I think I did. Where was it? I'd have to draw you a map, I think. Because you know, the picture is worth a thousand words. That would be great. Thanks. I'll wait. Actually, I was just about to start a fire for the night. It's still early. In these woods, you see, without light comes death. Don't forget, there's a dangerous serial killer lurking nearby. He could be watching us right now. So, while I draw the map, would you mind lighting a fire in the fireplace over there? I would appreciate that very much. Alright, I'll get a fire going for you. Wonderful! Now, see this axe stuck in the wall there. You will need that. The axe? Well, don't mind if I do.
How's the map coming along? Good, good. It should be ready really soon. Thank you for doing this. You are a real friend, Angie. Nah, it's not a big deal. Yes, it is. And I will now return the favor. I draw a map that will lead you to the place you mentioned. A little chapel with a doll hanging outside. It's not too far. Just keep going east from here, across the river and through the burnt forest until you see a rock with Walter's drawings on it. You are looking specifically for one with three sixes repeated six times on the same rock. That's where you make a turn and go through the briar patch. Be careful so you don't cut yourself on it. Then, on the other side, you should see the place you are looking for. Right. Thanks, Arno. Here, take the map. But you should just wait until morning anyway. I can't wait. There's something I have to do before midnight. You'll just get lost in the dark. I have a torch. He'll find you. He'll sneak up on you in the dark and he'll stab you. I'll walk really slowly and listen out for him. Well, I applaud your courage. I just hope I don't have to drag your dead body back to the village tomorrow. Just leave it there, if you find it. I don't mind. Leave it there? For the wild animals to feed on you? Wild animals? What wild animals? But anyway, that's not what I meant. You are nice. You helped me. I don't want to see you get hurt. Don't be silly. Now, take care and good luck on your hunt. It's time for me to go on mine.
Sheila? You okay? Let's get you out of here, girl. Shit. I'm too late. That doll, there's something written on it. I found Sheila. Now it's time to get back home.
Run, little friend. Find a way out. Get help.
Go ahead, little one. Our wolf brothers won't bother you. I told her not to go. There's no way we can find her now. And let's face it, she is probably already dead. Which is unfortunate because she was nice. I liked her. What if it's not too late? We can't just leave her there all alone. Let me explain it again. These woods are dark. It would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. There's gotta be a way. Maybe, if we had a tracking dog. Or... a cat? Hi there. I can't believe we are following a stray cat through the woods, in the middle of the night. Stop whinging. I really feel like it's leading us somewhere. Ugh, this bog stinks of death. Really? To me, it just stinks like shit. Well, yeah, that too. Death and shit. A popular combination. This is it, the Green Family Manor. Most people think it's just a legend, but it's really here. Great. But take it down a notch, man, could you? Remember the dead girl in the cave? Yes, but don't worry, I've got this. Well, you keep saying that, but... I don't know. That shit was fucked up. Yes, I agree. But unlike her, I know what I'm doing. I don't see you carrying any weapons. That worries me slightly. We don't need weapons. Just stay back and let me do the talking. It's really you. Hi there, Walter. How are you? Oh, do not be alarmed. I come as a friend, so please hear me out. My name is Arno, and I'm your biggest fan. I know everything about you. I even know your secret. The thing no one else knows. But that's okay, because it's safe with me. I just... I... really admire you, and I understand that you have done all these horrible things for a reason. I came all this way to tell you something important. Something that will change everything. Walter... I... No! Don't! Stop it! Right now! Arno? Shit! Let's find Angie and get the fuck out of here. Jenny? What are you doing here? 
Returning the favor? You're lucky the key was still in the lock. There's no time to talk, we should get the fuck out of here, Angie. Yeah. Let's go. Is that... Oh no. We can't save him. The big pile of muscles will shred us to bits if we go back there. But... Maybe I can talk him out of this. What do you want from us? Stop! Eat shit, motherfucker! I always knew my elephant gun would come in handy one day, but never in my wildest dreams did I imagine that it would be the legendary Walter Green himself that I shoot with it. Whoever you shot, though, it wasn't Walter Green. A seven-foot-tall strong man in a mask wielding a huge bloody knife? If that's not Walter Green, then who is? I don't know. But in that house, I found an old soldier's body. It had Walter Green engraved on the name tag. Look, it doesn't matter, guys. Whoever he was, he now bites the dust, and I don't think anyone will miss him. I guess... I'll miss Arno, though. He didn't deserve to die like that. Was he that bloken? Yep. Poor sod. If only I'd bought you more time. Maybe it could have saved him, too. What's done is done. He knew what he was getting into. We certainly owe him, but we can't turn back time. It should have been me who died there. Don't say that. Why would you even think like that? I have cancer. I'm dying anyway. You? What? No way. You're shitting us, right? I wish I was. My time's almost up. And Arno... He could have lived a long, happy life. Damn. I don't know what to say. There is nothing to say. Let's get back to the farm. I bet George is up already. Someone's got to make him a sandwich. You guys, go ahead. I'll join you in a minute. Okay, but try not to upset any more serial killers. At least not before breakfast. 
No, of course. But it's such a nice morning. I just want to enjoy it for a moment and collect my thoughts. Sure. See you later then. And don't step in a sheep's poo! Those are well-trained sheep. They don't shit in the garden. You can come out now, little friend. I know you've been following me. What's that? A name tag? Let's see. Miller. Nice name. Where's your owner, Miller? Are you lost? Well, you're welcome to stay if you want. There's always room for one more cat. Wow. Someone's popular today. Huh? What do you mean? The cats. Just look at them. They adore you. Cats? Oh, yes. These furry rascals are rather lovely, aren't they? Sarah mentioned something about cats not being allowed inside. Really? Well, she's always preferred dogs. But don't worry, we can keep the cats a secret. Kieran won't say anything to her either. And Jenny, well, ladies like her, never stay long. She'll probably be gone before next Sunday. Hey, uh, you're not heading towards the kitchen by any chance, are you? Yeah. You hungry? Oh, you wouldn't mind a nice sarnie, yeah. Right, I'm on it.
It's the love you will be coming to form. You look bigger today. Do I? Perhaps it's because I'm so proud of you. Two tasks completed already. Well done, Angeline. You're really doing it. Hmm. I suppose I am. Thanks. But why am I here again? That's how things work on Burnhouse Lane. Once you find it, you can never really leave it. Am I dead? Did I... choke to death coughing? Is that it? No. You're here because it's time for your third task. But I've only just finished the last one. You don't have a lot of time, Angie. You know that. Fine. What do you want me to do now? You must go to the nearby town of Honiton. There's a woman there named Mary Willis. She lives in a house on the far side of town, away from prying eyes. Once, she was on the front pages of all the local newspapers. Now, most have forgotten she even still exists. See, Mary used to be a nurse. Earth lobotomist. 
One day her colleagues caught her stealing blood bags. She was secretly stashing them in the trunk of her car so she could take them home. Mary lost her job, but did not go to jail. Instead, she spent a couple of years on the psychiatric ward, treated for schizophrenia. Okay, but well, what's that got to do with me? You will enter Mary's house and spill a drop of blood into her meal. Then, you must make sure she consumes it. Why? Because blood is where your sickness lives. If you want to cure it, you must first share it with someone else. Someone horrible, like Mary. But won't that kill her? No, it's just part of the ritual. The only meaning it has is symbolic. How do I make her drink it, though? She loves all blood. She'll love yours, too. They call her Bloody Mary for a reason. You'll see. Now, go back before poor old George starves to death. But I... No. Quiet now. Listen. Be still. And let the darkness take you back into your world. It's the cancer, isn't it? Oh, you poor thing. Is there... something I can do? I could use a friend. But, you know, I'll understand if you need to go. This desolate farm isn't really the right place for someone like you. Actually... George has told me there's a spare bedroom upstairs. I can have it, if I want. Oh yeah? This place is exactly what I need after everything I've been through. So I'm gonna take him up on his offer and stay for a while. The thing is, I've done some fucked up shit. <laughs> and I don't even mean the vicar. It's a lot of things I kind of fucked up. And uh, I could also use a friend. Angie. Okay. There's just uh, one problem. The room, well, it's uh, locked. And neither George nor Kieran knows what happened to the key. Maybe you've seen it? I don't know. I've seen a lot of keys. What does it look like? It's, uh, yellow, and it apparently has a, a lion engraved on it. A lion? I think that's the word Kieran used. I honestly can't understand what he's saying half the time. I'll let you know if I see it. You all right, George? They're quite fine, dear. Thank you. I must take you back. Back to the grave. No. You must put the light back into her eyes and bring laughter to her lips. She must be gay and happy. You all right, George? You pay a They're quite fine, dear. Thank you. One that I should like to see myself.
You found the key? I didn't realize that I've had it on me all along. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Shall we go in? Don't ask me, it's your room. One of the perks of being an actress is that I always stay in five-star hotels, wherever I go. They have those fancy bathrobes and mint chocolates waiting for you on the pillow. Sometimes they even do room service for pets. <laughs> What'd you imagine? You can order a poached fucking salmon for your fucking chihuahua if that's something that floats your boat. But this house and this room they're just so much better in what way no one's pretending anything here this shit is real so are the spiders just wait till you find one i don't mind spiders this place is oh exactly what i need in my life right now jenny are you sure it isn't your near-death experience that's making you see things through rose-colored glasses because let's face it, this house is a bit shit. I don't care. I haven't felt this good in a long time. Well, in that case, enjoy. I have a little errand to run in Honiton. So I'll see you later, I guess. I hope this errand doesn't involve any serial killers again. In Honiton? Please. The only thing that's capable of killing you in that dead little town is boredom. Sure. I... I didn't mean to patronize you. <laughs> I just... <sighs> Be careful, yeah? Hey, nurse! Where you off to? Honiton. Shopping? Not really. I was actually gonna... give some blood. You know. Oh, like to, uh, to save lives and stuff. Yeah, that's right. To save a life.
Hello, Moonlight. Can I call you that? Did you follow me here? To Honiton? Really? Boy, you're gonna wish you didn't. I have a nasty feeling that nothing good's waiting for us here. But, since you're already here... Will you help me again? Let's break inside this shitty old house and give Bloody Mary her medicine, shall we?
Can't hide from Mary, little fella. You wanna sit down there all day? Fine. I'll go. I'm walking away now. You stinking little carpet pooper. I'm not having another bleeding cat sneaking up in here.
Oh, Jeremy. You poor bastard. What has she done to you? See? I'm friendly. I'm totally friendly. It's time for Jeremy's dinner. Hello there, Angel. I've been waiting for you. I don't like it when strangers call me Angel before they even know my name. Forgive me. I... I just fought for a second. I hope that my suffering has come to an end. Are you in pain? It comes and goes like the ocean waves. And I'm stuck in the sand, unable to free myself, waiting for the freezing tide to fill my lungs again and again. Did she do this to you? Well, what do you think? But why? One day, I went for the pig. I tried to strangle it. I wanted to beat that fucker's fat ugly face into a pulp. See, you can't defeat Mary without killing the pig first. I mean, you can try, but it's like punching a concrete wall. It just ain't gonna work. So, she amputated your limbs as punishment for attacking her pig? That's not even the worst part. She made me watch. I'm sorry. It's fine now. I've accepted my fate. I'm just a dead man waiting for my angel to take me home. 
What's the deal with the pig? That fucking pig. They share a bond, they do. She loves the pig, and the pig loves her. But there's more to it. It's almost as if that bastard is the source of her power. She bottle feeds the pig with the blood she drains from my body. And in return, I know it's crazy, but that damned animal makes her strong as an ox. And honestly, there's no stopping her in a fight. I saw it with my own eyes. If you want to get to Mary, deal with the pig first. Right. Noted. What's your name? Ben. I used to run a barber shop. But that was then. And now, it's gone. Everything's gone. Is there anything I can do for you? I... I'd love to give you a haircut before my time's up. I don't think that's possible. No? Why? You know why. Oh, right. You thought I meant here? No. Just find my other barber shop when you're ready. The one on Burnhouse Lane. Burnhouse Lane? How do you know about that? I keep dreaming about it, and in my dreams I can walk and hold scissors again, but the shop's empty. No one ever comes. Please, will you come? It would mean a lot to me if you did. Yes, I'll come. Thank you. Thank you. I have to go. Yes. You fly, my angel. Fly like a bird. Mrs. Willis. Miss. Miss Willis. What do you want? My name is Detective Kagan, and this is Detective Underseat. We just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Can we come in? Not really. I'm in the middle of something. You're not going to keep us out in this rain, are you? It's just a standard procedure. We won't take long. Oi! I said! You just barged in! That's rude! Very, very rude! We're looking for someone. A man. Tall, dark hair, in his forties. Goes by the name... Benjamin Mitchell. What's that got to do with me? He's gone missing two months ago. So? Lots of people do. Right, of course. And when they do, it's our job to look for them. Yeah? Well, it's not to do with me. So go away and leave me alone. Is that blood on your fridge door? What? Oh, that... I... 
I had chicken liver for lunch. Ah, chicken liver. That's my favorite. Don't be disgusting, Dave. But that soup smells nice. You and your veggies? I just don't get you people. Look, I'm very busy. What? What's that sound? Did you hear that? Yes, like little feet tapping on the floorboards. Is there someone else in the house of you, Mrs. Willis? No. But someone's clearly walking upstairs. It's just the bloody rain tapping on the bloody window. Let's check it out, Detective. Wait. It stopped. Don't say I didn't bloody warn you. It's Miss... Miss Willis. Why is it so hard to remember? What a mess! Now I'll have to clean up these two. But not without my cleaning tool. You're such a good pig, Jeremy. Thank you. Give me the gun, Jeremy. Come on, you don't need it. Pigs don't use guns. I hope. Stay away from that hole. Spiteful bastard.
no. Don't tell me. It's already seven. Bloody hell, it's time for the soup! <laughs> Looks like you two ugly birdies will have to wait your turn. to be mad to eat those bloody things. It's time for your soup, idiot. I'm not hungry. Oh, don't give me that. I've had a difficult day. I don't care. Oh, you don't care, do you? I shit on you and your fucking soup. Oh, yeah? Didn't I bloody tell you? I'm having a difficult bloody day! Fuck you, bitch. Nice. Real nice. Right. Here comes your soup, whether you want it or not. Oh! There. It's done. I won't have to put up with any of your dilly-dallying anymore. It's you again. Who else did you expect? Hi. You are right. I've been better. Yeah, I can tell. You look like you're in some deep shit. That's actually exactly what happened. I was in deep shit. But I'm okay now. What about you? How are things, here? Well... I'll be honest, things have been pretty fucked up lately. What's wrong? <sighs> it's Ruby. She's gone. Ruby? Oh! The new big girl. From the cellar? Yeah. She went feral the other night just like destiny, so I close the shop. There's no one here that needs my food anymore. I feel like I should leave, but I don't know where to go. Have you been eating? 
You look so skinny. With Ruby gone, I've lost my appetite. All this food in here, and I just feel sick looking at it. You're wasting away. You shouldn't worry about me. Don't you have enough problems of your own? Because I'm good, I'm okay. I'll go somewhere, get some sleep. Yeah, that's what I need. A long, long sleep with no dreams. Where did Ruby go? The street, I think. I can hear the pounding of her feet at night sometimes. I just turn off the lights and hide. My advice. If you happen to bump into her, make sure you have enough bullets on you. Or just run. That's what I'd do. She's slow as shit. Just dash past her and you'll be alright. Any other threats out there that I should know about? Well, have you met the dead guys? Yeah. I met a whole bunch at the cemetery the other day. They looked like... burnt corpses. And I'm pretty sure they wanted to eat me. What are they? <sighs> They're the poor sods who won't accept their fate. That's all. They were weak in life, and they're just as weak in death. Sometimes a single bullet is enough to bring them down. You still have your gun, yes? I wish. But no, I lost it. Well, I'm sure there's another one somewhere out there. How do I get back now? Why? What's there to go back to? Would you understand if I told you? You're right, I probably wouldn't. This place has been my home for as long as I can remember. But it's not mine. Not yet, anyway. All right, all right. I know just the thing. There's this guy. Ben. Ben the Barber. He said he was... expecting you. Expecting me? Said something about a haircut. You two had an appointment? Not exactly, but... Well, his shop's here on Burnhouse Lane, just a few doors down from mine. The problem is the road is blocked. You'll have to go out the back door, then cut through the old swimming pool. But no rush. Have a nice smoke first. I'll open the door when you're ready. Right. I'll have a smoke now. You done? Then cross over the counter. I'll take you to the back door. This way. Good luck out there. Hopefully we'll meet again. Someday. Thanks. Yeah. See you next time.
Angel, I'm here. Come closer. You came. I knew you would. It's you. The Chelsea guy. I prefer Ben. Ben the barber, at your service, Angeline. How did you grow your limbs back? How? It's simple. That fat evil woman chucked a pot full of boiling hot soup all over me. And I died. Ah, shit. I'm sorry, mate. It's alright. I was too tired to carry on living anyway. And here, on Burnhouse Lane, I can finally give my very last haircut. The finest I've ever ever done. So, she didn't eat any of the soup? No. Why? Did you poison it? Yeah. Well, sort of. Mary hated the vegetables. She only made it for me. She said a healthy diet was meant to help my body make new blood quicker. And yet, it ultimately killed you. That it did. Ironic, isn't it? Ugh, those Brussels sprouts always made me wretch. I can still smell them, even after death. Did you say something about cutting my hair? Yes, the chair's ready for you. But I thought barbers were for men only. Not this one. Women are always welcome here at Ben's. Especially you, Angeline. Just let me know when you're ready. You died. Does that mean I'm dead too? You're not dead. Not yet, my angel. But this dreadful illness you have is killing you fast. You're one foot in the grave already. It's just a matter of time. How do you know about it all? There are no secrets on Burnhouse Lane. I, myself, have been a frequent visitor here for a long time. Enough to get used to it. And I can tell you, this place is horrible, but it kind of grows on you. Stop it, Ben. The only thing that grows on me is my fucking cancer. Quiet day. I don't see any other customers. It's always quiet here nowadays. The shop is just a ghost of its former self. The kind of people that live on Burnhouse Lane, they... I guess they don't have a great need for barbers anymore. That's what it is. What people? There's hardly anyone here. Oh, there's people here, all right. They sit at home, quiet-like, with their doors locked tight. But why? I guess they choose to suffer in solitude. It's not exactly something you want to share, is it? You didn't help me. Did you not hear the gunshots outside? Forgive me, Angel. I couldn't interfere. That thing was yours to kill. I nearly died. You could have... You could have opened the door and let me in. That's not how it works, I'm afraid. She had to die. There was no other way. Who was she? She was Ruby. You already know that. Yes, but... I feel like I'm missing something here. I want to know the truth. Who was the real Ruby? What does it matter? Come on, Ben. Tell me. Who was she? She was merely a voice inside your head. A voice that says more. A voice? It's gone now, but that's okay. You never liked it anyway. 
I'm ready for the haircut. Then please, take a seat. If you require a cigarette first, the ashtray's over there. I'll wait. The scissors feel good in my hands again. God, how I've missed this. It feels like there's this electricity flowing through my veins instead of blood. I wish I'd understood it all before, you know? Sometimes things just inexplicably happen to us. But at the same time, these things are what's meant to be. I mean... A grave digger doesn't bury you in the ground because it pleases him. A bee doesn't sting you to cause you pain. Or a doctor. A doctor doesn't cut you open to punish you for something you did. They do it because those are the ways of the world and always have been. Oh, so you're a philosopher now. Okay... God, we were happy back then, weren't we? Long ago, in another life. Little kids splishing and splashing in the puddles on rainy afternoons. Mothers calling us home for dinner. So innocent and pure, so delightfully blithesome. Without a care in the world. I saw a kid playing in the puddle today. I used to do the same when I was little. Yeah, well... Now, take a deep breath and let it all go. Surround yourself with sweet nothingness. It's cold here and it's dark. But it's a good kind of cold and a good kind of dark. You knew this would come. The moment you start to fade is simply the preparation for what's about to happen. The parts of who you once were begin to crumble and fall like an old tape. And you realise... I'm sorry Angel, I'm so so sorry. I had to do it. Forgive me. Sleeping Beauty waking up. Snooping around me bloody house, were we? Naughty, naughty. Let me go, you bitch. How about some bloody gratitude? You would have died in that basement if I hadn't showed up just in time to pull you out. Fuck you. Oh. Seriously. What's with everyone being so bloody rude today? I'm just gonna ignore it. Truth is, I'm really glad you showed up. That stupid bloke was getting all dried up way too fast. I had to let him go. But you... Well, you... You look full of blood. I think it's the start of a long and beautiful friendship, dear. But let's see how you bleed first. Shall we? Oh no. Looks like we're out of needles. I'm sorry, but you'll have to wait. I 
think I had another box up in the attic somewhere. Say hi to your pile of shit.
running away, are we? Well, let's see how you run without your skinny pretty legs. It's time to leave Honiton and never come back. That bite on my leg is really starting to hurt. I won't be able to run. The wound must be deeper than I thought. Wait, did I succeed in the end? I mean, the soup was a fiasco, but Mary did drink my blood in the end. Straight from my leg. Speaking of which, I must put a dressing on it when I get home. It's way past midnight already. The town's asleep. Then again... This town is always a sea. Why did he even park so far away? In hindsight, it was really unnecessary.
Wake up! Come quick! You need to save him! This way! Hurry! He's in the stable! wrong with him? Is he ill? Oh, please, nurse, do something. Make him better. I'm sorry, Kieran, but Rich is gone. Gone? But how? Why? He was fine yesterday. No, he can't just die like this. That's not fair. Death is never fair. It doesn't matter if you have plans or dreams or hopes. Death will take them all away in the blink of an eye just to show you how unimportant you really are. One minute you're here, next minute you're gone. So of course it's not fucking fair. Why would it be? Life's not fair, and neither is death. Uh, what if I, I just thought uh, you remember to feed Richard every day, did you? R what? Because look at him, poor thing. He's skin and bones. Are you saying it's my fault? Well, it is someone's fault. The poor bugger didn't just drop dead for no reason. So pardon me if I'm a little pissed off to see my old friend dead like this. So let me ask you again. Did you or did you not feed Richard as you were meant to? Yes, I fed him every day. You sure? Yes, I am. It wasn't even my job, but I did it anyway. You know why? Because I really liked Richard. Believe it or not, you're not the only one that's upset by his death. Bollocks to that! You could all just fuck off! He'll come around. Let's give him some time.
What are you doing, George? Tell Steve that we're going tomorrow, will ya? We need him to get everything ready. Steve? I didn't mean to look, but we found it by accident. It was just a matter of time. You know what he's like. Naive little fool. Why did she marry him? We'll never know. Oh, come on, you're flooding the house. Sorry, dear, I, I just... What am I supposed to think about this? I've been looking for Steve all day and it's like he's bloody vanished. Well, wherever he is, he's not going to be in this bath, is he? Out we go, George. They're in the kitchen. What? The pearls. They're in the kitchen where you left them. Remember? Oh, I knew I should have called the police as soon as I saw them. Let's get you out of this bath, George. What? No, not yet. I'll drive. I told you. George. You'll have to return these. Return and apologize. I won't have it any other way. Goodness gracious me. A common thing under my roof. What's it come to? Steve isn't here. It's me, Angie. Fine. Have it your way. Sarah always listened to me. But you, you were always trouble. Snap out of it, George. I know. I'm sorry. But I tried. Right. I'm sorry. But I'm getting you out, whether you want it or not. The fire will warm you up soon enough. You'll be alright, yeah? But... What was that all about, George? Well, I, uh, To be honest, I don't quite remember, dear. But since you're here, we could do with a nice sandwich, if you're not too busy right now. I've already made one. Except, we didn't have a lot of stuff left in the fridge, so... It might be a little... different. Oh, I'm sure it's not as bad as you say, dear. Okay. I'm quite all right now, thank you. Jenny? Where are you? Down here. I found something. door. Oh, it was well hidden behind these shelves, but I had a feeling there was something special about this basement. What were you looking for here? And why? There's something here. Something that even George doesn't know about. Remember that fucking priest? He knew about it, and he wanted to find it too. Huh. But the bastard was looking in the wrong fucking place.
Did you try the other door here? The one at the end? Yeah, there's nothing there. Just a little coal storage. No one's used it for years. Oh. Okay. Why? No reason. I was just curious. Is it locked? Of course it's locked. You ever seen a door like this that wasn't? And not just with the normal lock. Oh no, it's some fancy electronic device. I don't quite understand. But I will figure it out. I'll get in there. Even if I blow this fucker up. It sounded like you were wrecking the place. Jeez, Angie. Why do you always have a problem with everything? I just knocked over a bunch of boxes. It's not like anyone gives a fuck. So please, pull that fucking stick out of your ass and chill, yeah? Beg your pardon? Don't be so negative, could you? That bad energy on you, fucking hell, Angie. You really need to work on that. Why do you care so much about this stupid doll? I just... do. Do you have a problem with that? Yes. You're a guest in this house. You should stop snooping around. And who are you to tell me what to do? Someone who saved your life? And... I'm not telling you what to do. I'm only telling you what not to do. I'd appreciate it if you didn't abuse the trust you've been given in this house. A guest in this house? Huh. So that's what it is. You're jealous because George treats me like I'm Audrey fucking Hepburn. And you're just a nurse. Here to wipe his floor when he can't hit the toilet on time. But, sorry darling. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Cuz... <gasps> I ain't going anywhere. Anytime soon. I think you know exactly what's inside. And something tells me it isn't just a 12-year-old pile of spuds. I'm only trying to find something to do on this stupid farm. I'm bored. So, I've tried to do a little detective work. Solve the mystery of a secret door. But, who am I kidding? I know you wouldn't understand. And why is that? Ugh, forget it. No, say it. You're just... not a lot of fun, are you? Oh. This isn't you. Tell me what happened, right now. I, uh, I think that, that there are drugs on the other side of the door. Drugs? That perv from the church came here because he needed them. And now I do too. Happily. I get it. You're addicted to drugs. The withdrawal symptoms are hitting you big time right now. That explains a lot. I just need... one... more... time. It all makes sense. At the end of a great high, there's always a great low. Huh? I'll talk to you when you're in a better mood. I'm in a great mood, Angie. It'll be even better when I finally open this fucking door. But I don't need your help with that. I'm sure you have better things to do. Like changing George's diapers, starving horses to death, or maybe sucking that fat retard stick. Huh. I bet he'd like that. But <laughs> whatever. I don't care what you do. Just don't come crying on my shoulder when you need a friend. I don't need losers like you to weigh me down.
Murphy. I'm the one in the hat. Can you see me? Well, don't just stand there. Help me! Calm down, will you? I can't help you. I'm stuck, like you. Stuck? What do you mean? It's the damn sea air, darling. Didn't you see the warning signs? You fill your lungs with that shit, and it freezes all your motor functions for as long as it's circling in your system. It's also painful as hell. Not at first, but mark my words, you'll feel it too. He's the man with no face. How should I know? He didn't tell me his name. I don't think he can speak at all. All I know is that he brings people here once they're paralyzed. Then he coats them in hot wax so he can turn them into statues, dressed as crew and passengers of this fucking ship. He's left for now. You know why? Yes, you guessed it. He's getting a bath of molten wax nice and ready for you, cause darling, you're about to be dipped in that shit from head to toe. So, uh, perhaps it's best that, well, you prepare for it, mentally. No. Oh yes, yes indeed. I'm already half dead inside my wax shell, darling. Just waiting for the suffering to end. Oh, thanks to that, what would you even call him? 
Ähm I'd call him the sculptor. Cuz he sculpts things out of wax. Makes sense, I guess. How did you end up on Burnhouse Lane? Oh, darling, the things I'd done, it was all just a matter of time. I came to Burnhouse Lane to pay for the lifetime of overindulgence. But the price Well, the price has exceeded my expectations. And you? What's a fine young lass like yourself doing on Burnhouse Lane? I smoke like a chimney. Ah, cigarettes. A dirty habit, but I don't charge. I've had my share of bad habits myself. I know the bittersweet taste of addiction all too well. Are you saying that all these sculptures have dead bodies inside them? Oh yes, and all the ones up on the main deck too. Some are quite old, all rotten inside, barely holding together. Can't you tell by the stench of death? Your sculptor has been quite a busy bee. And the worst part is... I know. The worst part is... We'll soon join them. At least the pain will stop. It stops when you're dead. Right? Well, I'm not gonna die like this. Give me a moment to think. I admire your willpower, darling. But I've tried everything. We are gonna die here. Oh, I should have never set my foot aboard this ship in the first place. But you know what they say. Curiosity killed the cat. Miller. Fuck me. You're seeing this too, lady?
done, lady. You did it! This poisonous air won't trouble you now. But before you leave this dreadful ship, and I really hope you do, could you do me a little favor first? Yes? Thank you! Turn something big and sharp and smash me to pieces with it, would you? Are you mad? Why would I do that to you? I'm in so much pain. I just want the suffering to stop. Please. I've been here for so long. I'll welcome death with open arms. I... I'll think about it. a large metal bell.
see you found your little one. I found... something. A creature. But I don't know what it is. Put it down somewhere, will you? We'll take a closer look. He's a good little boy, isn't he? What? Good God, just look at him. He's almost starved to death. Feed him. He belongs to you now. Feed him? With what? Just give him part of yourself. That's what mothers do. Shatter me into pieces! It is time for my agony to end! <laughs> yes, and again! It's time for the final blow!
Who goes there? Identify yourself right now, or, or I shall obliterate you! Oh, you could be him in disguise, sneaking up on me. What's your name? I swear I'm gonna shoot you right in your ugly face if you don't tell me who you are. Go on. I just want to know your name. Tell me your name. Who goes there? Identify yourself. My name is Angie. Angie? No, it's not. Liar! My name is Rob. Rob? Yeah, I remember you, Rob. You crooked, thieving priest. You old perv. You stole my shotty, you bloody bastard. Well, eat shit, motherfucker.
Well, well, well. Just look who's here. Did you finally decide to get help? In this stinking place? No. I can afford better. Yeah, right. Because you're rich and famous. You have no idea what it's like. So just fuck off. You were so nasty to me, for no reason. I'm still mad at you. You just pissed me off. I snapped. Not the first time, definitely not the last. So, get over it. Huh. You won't even say you're sorry. What? Do you want me to lie? You're suffering from withdrawal symptoms. That's why you've been such a dick. Oh, yeah? Your constant smoking reminds me of how I used to do it. So, thanks for giving me nicotine cravings. Thanks a bunch. There's nothing like a secondhand smoke when you're trying your hardest not to think about it. But it doesn't matter now.
James. Am I? No. You're alive. You're safe now. Take a deep breath, Angie. The worst is over. At least for now. Are you really here? I think so, but... I... feel like we don't have a lot of time. I'd like to... hold you in my arms one last time. Just in case we wake up and find it was all just a dream. I've missed you, Angie. Those two years we had together. They were the best years of my life. I'm scared, James. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I used to pretend I was strong. I tried to be there for you, to support you. But when you died, it felt like I died with you. Nothing mattered to me. I was a broken fucking shell. I'm sorry. I didn't want that. Did you know I got sick with cancer too? Yeah. I'm dying. And I can't even blame anyone. Because I did this all to myself by smoking all those fucking cigarettes. I tried to end my life, too. That's just... Fuck's sake, Angie. Why? Why would you do that? I was so confused. But it didn't work, okay? So for now I'm just... hanging around. Waiting. Waiting. Yeah. I remember that. Just waiting and waiting and waiting. That hook should have killed me. And yet, I'm standing here talking to you and I feel no pain. How is that even possible? I'd say, even in the worst nightmare, you get to have that one time the luck's on your fucking side. Don't you think you deserve that? I killed the sculptor. I thought he'd never die. But I outsmarted him. Feels good. How did you get here? I'm... I, I'm not really sure. I've been away, wandering the empty streets of a city I didn't know. I was cold and lost. But then I found something, and I instantly knew that it belongs to you. I, I had to give it to you. What is it? I'll take you to it in a minute. It's a reminder that sometimes... Not everything's fully lost. Remember how happy we used to be? I didn't think it was possible to fall for someone like that. Like, in the movies. A lonely young nurse meeting a handsome stranger. Who also happened to be her patient. We didn't care about any of that. I wish we could say the same about your matron. Yeah. But she was just jealous. She probably wanted you for herself. Oh, I looked like a fucking rock star back then, but... A dying man isn't exactly the best husband material. Even for your matron. You were in remission. We thought... Well, shit happens, don't it? Yeah. Do you ever regret... Um... Any of this? Getting involved with me, on the level we did, just to get your heart broken? 
What sort of stupid question is that? I'm not even going to answer that. You know, there was something about you I could not resist. It was like kissing a vampire. You know it's a terrible idea, but you do it anyway. I'll take that. But only because I love vampires. <laughs> I know you do. Shit. I wish I was a vampire now. Yeah. So do I. Vampires don't get cancer. Come with me. Yeah, I will. We've got to find a way out. <laughs> I... I can't lose you again. It was bad enough the first time. I'm so sorry. I know. But I've always said one day I'll be your get out of jail free card. And I'm here now. Just tell me one thing. How many rules are you breaking by being here? Oh, I don't know. I guess all of them. I don't want to die, James. I'm not ready for it. I found Burnhouse Lane and discovered its secrets. I can survive this. There's a cure. I've almost got it. But sometimes, deep down, I start thinking, and it feels like I've been sent on a fool's errand. All this stuff can't be real. How could it? It's fucking ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. You've said you've almost got it. It would be crazy to give up now. And what if I lose? Then we'll worry about plan B. But right now, it's time. We must go. Close your eyes and count to five. I've got a little surprise for you. Something that'll put a big smile on your face. One, two, five. Turn around. Moonlight! But how? You were dead. Come on, Angie. Do I really have to remind you how many lives cats have? I knew I had to bring him back to you as soon as I saw him. A friend you'd lost. A friend reborn. He'll guide us through the dark. All we need to do is follow him and stay inside his light or else the darkness will take us. You should know that I'm friends with darkness nowadays. Really? I'm a big girl. Doesn't scare me anymore. The darkness I'm talking about isn't just the absence of light, Angie. It's a state of mind. Exactly. And she's my friend. I call her Brenda. Yeah, well, stay close then. We will make Brenda very, very angry. James? No. Thank you.
time getting here, to be fair. Don't even start. I've had a difficult bloody day. Oh, haven't we all? No, not you. You've had a nice relaxing nap, remember? Ah, well, I couldn't help it. You can only chase rats around Burnhouse Lane for so long. You've come a long way, haven't you? I honestly thought you'd give up by now. But you are a persistent one. Four tasks completed. What can I say? Impressive. But you're not quite done yet. Sometimes I don't know if I should thank you or punch you. You wouldn't do that. I might look like a monster, but you know that deep down I'm just a cat. And cats are many things. But they're never evil. That's not what I heard. Really? And who's spreading these false rumors? Uh, the dog owners? Ah, yes. They would. But no one takes them seriously, do they? Listen, it's time for the final task. Are you ready for it? No, but give it to me anyway. Then listen carefully. You must tell someone the whole truth about yourself. The good and the bad. And all the dirt. Like you would to a best friend. If you had one, of course. But you can't hide anything. It won't work if you do. Why? What's the point of this? You must rid yourself of all this baggage. You people hold on to it for way too long. I'd really rather face another serial killer. You don't mean that. I just feel no connection to any of those fools. How can I open my heart to them? They don't give a flying fuck about me. They're all flawed, that's for sure. But that's just a... human thing, isn't it? You're all broken inside, always looking for another war to wage. Try to let go of that for a moment. I'm sure that if you take a good look around, you can find someone who'll lend a friendly ear. Well, even if I do, how will I know if I've told him everything? You'll know because once it's done, a man called Mr. Fox will arrive at the farm. Let him in. He'll be so hungry he could eat a horse. Offer him food, but never speak to him. Do you understand? You cannot say even a single word to Mr. Fox or... Well, just don't. He's very peculiar about it. Fine, I'll try to keep my mouth shut. Once Mr. Fox is fed, he will go, and you will follow him to a place on the moors. He'll show you a spot where you must dig a hole and recover a treasure buried underground. With that in your possession, you will finally be able to remove the illness from your body. Oh, he will also require a drop of your blood, so don't say I didn't want you.
Okay, I got it. I think. Good. Go back now, get some rest. You're gonna need it. Richard! <laughs> Go on, hop on his back. He won't bite. He's here to take you home.
I'm glad you're in this. Why? I, I wanted to apologize for, you know, accusing you of Richard's death. Uh, he was being an arsehole. What? Arsehole. I was an arsehole. Yeah, I heard you. I just wanted you to say it again. I was wrong. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. What? Forgive me. It's all right, Kieran. I forgive you. Sometimes we all say things we don't mean. You just really loved that horse, didn't you? I did, as a matter of fact. But this year is Richard's week. Join us. Let's drink in his memory. I don't think so, Kieran. Come on, nurse. Red or white? Or do you prefer beer? I'm not a big drinker. Besides, I need a clear head for now. Then take a bottle with you for later. Go on, it's on me. Jenny, we need to talk. What? Speak up, girl. I can't hear you. We need to talk. Now? Now! But what about the party? Come on, you'll be back before you know it. I guess, but... <gasps> hey, do you have any cigarettes? I'd really like to smoke one. Sure. Sweet! <laughs> then, uh, wait for me behind the barn. You know, where Robert died. Richard! What? The horse's name was Richard. Ah, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, just wait for me by the barn. I'll be there in a minute. You all right, George? Oh, I'm fine, dear. You? Yeah. Well, what? The cigarette. You said I could have one. Oh, right. I did, didn't I? Here. Oh, this is heaven. Oh, why did I ever quit? Jenny, there's something I want to talk to you about. Remember when I told you that I had cancer? Cancer? Uh, yes. 
But didn't you say you were getting better? No. This is incurable, inoperable lung cancer. It'll keep growing until it kills me. Are you sure? You don't look like you're dying to me. Wait, what? Of course I'm sure. Just because there's no blood pouring out of my eyes and I don't crawl on the floor doesn't mean that I'm fine. For now. I don't believe you. My pap had cancer and he looks like Uncle Fester. You know, from the Adams family. And he puked a lot. That's because you probably had chemo. I'm not doing it. It's too late. And I've seen what it does to people. I don't want to die stuck in a hospital bed. I know a good doctor in LA. I'll give you his number when I get back home. You don't understand? This can't be cured. Not by the doctors, anyway. I... killed someone. It was in self-defense, and I... Please stop. I don't want to know. But... My lawyer always warns me to stay away from this sort of stuff. No offense, Angie. I get it. You did some bad shit. Didn't we all? But... <laughs> I'll be damned if I get dragged to court as a witness for something you did. It could potentially ruin my career. So, you know. Just keep your mouth shut and you'll be alright. I'm sure. I hurt myself sometimes. I know it's stupid. As a nurse, I even used to learn about it. There was one time I was in so much emotional pain that I tried it, and it did bring me some relief. It made me hate myself too. I think sometimes that if I hate myself, it will make it easier just to... Look, it's just a phase. We all have to go through it at some point. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah? Yeah, I'd show you my scars, but in my business, you know? I had to have them removed. With lasers. Hurts like hell, but this shit really works. You should try it. I tried to kill myself once. I climbed a chair with a rope around my neck. When I jumped. But, you know, the rope snapped. Huh? Cool. Ballsy. Oh, I've never had the courage, but I'd be lying if I said I never thought about it. You? Why? You have everything. I don't. But it will get a lot easier once I open that damn door in the basement, that's for sure. You're just obsessed with that door, aren't you? You have no idea. I'm not sure if I fed Richard the way I was meant to. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Who is Richard again? The horse? Oh, uh, right. Oh, sorry. <sighs> Too much wine makes me forget stuff. By the way, I'm trying to get Kieran drunk so he would tell me more about the bunker door in the basement. He's lived on this farm for a long ass time, right? He's gotta know something. Another few drinks and he'll spill it all to me like a good little girl. I want to live, but I don't even know how to anymore. I can feel the doom clock ticking above my head and it's driving me insane. I should make a bucket list, like other people do, to live while I still can. Do cool, crazy stuff, like bungee jumping, or swimming with fucking dolphins. But instead, here I am, unable to accept what's coming, desperately trying to cheat death. But no one has that kind of power. Least of all me. <gasps> hey! I swam with dolphins in the Bahamas last year. What? 
Uh-huh. Did you know? The dolphins don't really smile. I mean, they look like they do. But they don't. It's just the shape of their face. Right. Good to know. That's very useful knowledge for me. Thank you. Are you being sarcastic now? Cause, damn, I'm trying my best here to take your mind off all these problems. You really need to let shit go. Yeah, I will. Sure. I get it, Jenny. As a matter of fact, if I was a dolphin, I'd be smiling right fucking now. Ugh, you are being sarcastic. That's because you're not listening to me. Fine. I'll try harder. Jesus! I don't really have any friends. I mean, I have colleagues from work. Well, mostly just Tracy, because... Working for the agency, I travel a lot, covering shifts in hospitals and nursing homes all across the country. The pay is good, but you don't really get enough time to bond with anyone. This job here is quite different. I don't usually spend that long in one place. Angie? Why are you telling me this? I just need a friend, I guess. A real one. Someone like you? Me? <laughs> Angie, are you blind? You really think I'm a good friend material for anyone, let alone someone like you. Look at me. I'm a Hollywood star. I got to the top by sleeping with every man that wanted me, and by destroying every woman that stood in my way. It's in my job description to act like a spoiled fucking bitch, to demand, to take anything I want. And I have no time or desire to be anyone's friend because I know that in the end, I'll have to stab them right in the back. I always do. I know there's a part of you that cares. You weren't looking for me in the woods. You risked your life. I was bored. This isn't the real you. Then what do you know about the real me? You're a drug addict, Jenny. And if you wanted to, you could get help. And you could get better. That'll teach you to mind your own fucking business. Oh, and by the way... I think you made it all up. You don't really have cancer, do you? You just wanted people to feel sorry for you. And that's fucking pathetic, you know? And what in God's name happened to you? I fell in a puddle. Oh, unlucky. But that's not all, is it? There's something else bothering you. Oh, we can tell. Uh, you know, it's just life. You won't fool me that easily, dear. I might be old, but I'm not blind. It's time to open this big bag of worries. 
You've been carrying it around for weeks. All right. I'll tell you. There's a disgusting, ugly cancer growing inside my chest. It's here to kill me. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. I probably shouldn't even be here, but I'd convince myself that I should do this one last job. I thought this would pay for the trip my late husband always dreamed of. Japan. It always seemed so... cool. But now that I think about it, it's not even my dream. Do I really want to go there? Or am I desperately trying to run away from people saying they're sorry and the way they look at me? To hide and pretend that I'm still fine and nothing's happened. And yes, I was married. It felt real. It was real. But my husband was a sick man. We both knew our time was short, and no matter how loved he made me feel, I accepted we wouldn't live happily forever after. And yet, it still surprised me, how quickly it all happened. Suddenly, I was alone, but I promised James that I would be strong, and I was determined to keep that promise no matter what. I made an effort to get dressed every morning, to eat, to go to work knowing that in time, the pain would become easier to bear. And then this happened. First, the cough. Then the chest pains. And blood on the tissue. I couldn't believe the same fucking thing was happening to me. I lost a husband, but I wasn't ready to lose my life. I mean, I promised him I'd live on. But they called me in, and they confirmed what I already knew. I remember they all looked down at their shoes whenever they mentioned the word cancer. That fucking cancer! Was it because I smoked more since James had died? But some people smoke all their lives, and they never get sick. Life had taken so much from me already, and then... It still decided it wasn't enough yet, so it came back for what's left. What did I do to be punished like this? Why me? It's not fucking fair! So... Now... I know how this ends. I... Get... Nowhere. My whole life was fucking pointless. I achieved nothing, and those few people that know me will soon forget I ever existed. And on top of it, I'm probably losing my mind, because I've seen things. A talking cat from a burned house. Different worlds. Disfigured creatures. But that's probably just my cancer spreading into my brain, because I'm sure it was all in my head. George. I'm just tired. I'm scared. And now I'm covered in mud, and I don't even have any clean clothes to put on. And I... Thank you, George. I... I needed to let it all out, I guess. And now you also need a nice cup of tea. I'll make you one. But first, let's get you a change of clothes. I'm alright. These will dry soon. No, no. You should take one of the jumpers from the line. Anne, there's a pair of jeans there that looks about your size, too. No, I can't. I insist. They're Sarah's old clothes. She ain't worn them in years. Ah, they're too small for her anyway. Moy was thinking I'd give them to a charity shop in Honiton. But this is even better. Ah, and it'll save us a trip in a town. Yeah? Of course. Go on, grab one and go get changed. I'll put the kettle on.
I know why you came here. You want the box, don't you? I was told to look for the treasure. This box sounds like it could be it. I'm sure it is, after all. There's nothing else here that's worth looking for. Just a whole lot of suffering, wherever you go. Who are you? Um, look. Whenever I try to remember my name, I get this huge fucking headache. It literally feels like my brain's being stabbed with hundreds of tiny knives. So, no offense, but I'll just skip that part, may I? It's not like it matters, anyway. I'm just another ghost, living on Burnhouse Lane, waiting for something. I think it should be happening any day now. Tell me more about this box. Well, it's black, which by the way happens to be my favorite color, and it's made of wood, about this big. But it's not the box itself that you want. It's what's in it. And what's that? Oh, I won't spoil it for you. You'll see for yourself when you get it. If you get it, I mean. Because it's not going to be easy. You're sick. Like me. Aren't you? Everyone's sick on Burnhouse Lane. Haven't you noticed that yet? We're all dealing with it differently. Some of us give up right at the start. They put a gun to their head and pull the trigger. They swallow poison. Anything, really, just to escape the horrors waiting for them here. Then there's the weak ones. They try to fight, but how can they win against their own minds? So they all turn into pathetic shadows of their former selves, and they wander the dark corners of this place like zombies. And then there's us. We are strong enough to see it through to the end, but at what cost? Do you know where I can find this box? Yeah. It's in the other building, right across this great big chasm. Look! But how can I get there? I know a way. I could take you there. But there's something we should do before we go. And I know this will sound a bit crazy. But we'll need a cat to help us. The bent cat? You know him? What? No, he's not burned. He's white as snow, with a black stripe on his tail. He kind of looks like a big raccoon, you know what I mean? Moonlight? Yes, so you know him! Oh, we've been to hell and back together. He's an old friend. Where is he? Well, it's a long bloody street. He could be anywhere. But you can summon him. Summon? A cat? Summon a cat, indeed. Why do you not want the box for yourself? Oh, that's because I know what's inside. And it's not for me. Or rather... I know I'd be very tempted to use it, because I really don't want to die, but that would make me someone that I don't want to be. So I'll pass. Thank you. But you can have it. It's okay. 
I don't judge. Stop beating around the bush and tell me what's in the box. Now. Don't start with this cat voodoo, please. I've been around cats for so long, I've grown immune to it. But since you really want to know, I'll tell you a bit more. You want spoilers? I'll spoil it for you. Why not? But I'll only do it if you play my game and give me a correct answer to my question. Interested? Yes. Great! It involves magic, so listen carefully. I am now picturing an object. A vegetable. I can see it inside my head clear as day. I will now send this image into your mind. Share it with you, telepathically. I want you to focus real hard and see it too. Take your time, and then tell me, what vegetable am I thinking of? It's a potato. Nope. That's a wrong answer. Hey, how do I know you're not cheating? I'd never do that. Shouldn't you have the correct answer, like, written on a piece of paper to prove it to me? Huh. Good point. I should, really. Oh well, I'll try that next time. But for now, the game's over, I'm afraid. And sadly, we both lost. How the hell do I summon a cat? Well, there's only one way I know. So, tell me. Can you by any chance play the piano? What? Um... Yeah. I can. I used to be pretty good. But... What's that got to do with bloody cats? They love it! How do you know? I have this friend who always opens the window and plays for the neighborhood cats. And they all come running like she's their cat mother calling them for dinner. Shall we ask a friend to play then? No, she... She can't come to Burnhouse Lane, thankfully. So, yeah, it's gonna have to be you, I'm afraid. Oh, and make sure you put out a bowl of milk for the cat first. They like that. Okay. Milk and music. Yeah, I can do that. Is there anything in particular I should play? I don't think it matters, as long as the music is coming straight from your heart. I haven't played in years. Don't worry. It'll all come back to you. I'm sure of it. It's time for me. I'll talk to you later, girl. Be careful out there. I heard strange noises outside earlier tonight.
I forgive you for what you did. I know you didn't want to hurt me.
This is incredible. Cats are magical creatures. Everyone knows that. Hey, how you doing there, mate? You all right? Okay, you pet him now. And then we shall go over to the other building and wait for the elevator. Huh? I'll explain it later. Now go on, show him some love. So, here's the plan. We need to get up to the top floor. That's where the box is. Behind the red door. Apartment 13. It's locked, but I can handle it. How exactly? Um... I've been known for my ability to... unlock things... with lockpicks. I'm not a burglar or anything, but it's a useful skill to have. Sometimes, it even saves lives. The problem is with the elevator. It doesn't work like it should. And that's where our friend Moonlight steps in. It's kinda tricky, so listen carefully. There's this device up there. A scale of swords. Moonlight can bring items scattered around here and place them on the scale. If he picks the right ones, the elevator should go straight to the top. What sort of items are we talking about? Well... At first glance, they're just ordinary, everyday objects. But they all represent the good and bad things that people like us will never get to experience in life anymore. 
And how is a bloody cat supposed to know what they are? Cats know more than you think. I thought you'd understand that by now. Come on then, let's get in the elevator.
enough. Let's go down and start again, shall we? Thank you. 
This is it! Now let's get inside. Well, shit. Spiders. I fucking hate spiders. I kinda like them. You know. There's this dark, indescribable beauty in spiders. Really? Look at those spider eggs. Or whatever the fuck they are. They look beautiful to you. Yeah, okay. That's fucking gross.
whoever smokes this cigarette will receive your cancer. Choose carefully who you give it to. Once the smoke hits their lungs, there will be no going back. Only death and suffering. And for you, a new life. Now forget you ever saw me. I was just a dream. A ghost. A shadow. One day, we'll meet again. I'll take you with me for a long walk. Down to the river. But don't trouble yourself with that now. Now it's time to celebrate your success. Shouldn't you smile? Was Mr. Fox really just a dream? Oh, what difference does it make? What matters now is that all your tasks are done. You got what you wanted. Well, almost. It'll all be over as soon as someone smokes that special cigarette of yours. Easy to say. I didn't know it would be like this. To be honest, I'm not even sure if I can do this. Take your time. But not too long. Soon the sickness will make you weak, and then... Well, let's just say that it would be such a shame to waste your gift after you worked so hard for it. Don't you think? Angie, you all right? You haven't come down all day. I'm getting worried about you, dear. I'm sorry. I... I didn't realise. I've not been feeling too well. Oh. But I'll be down in a minute. What? Uh, no. No, no, no. You you stay in bed, darling. I I'm managing perfectly fine here on my own. So take your time and rest and, and don't worry about a thing. I'll go and make you a cup of tea, shall I? And a nice sandwich. Yes. I bet you'll feel better once you've had some food in you. Do you need anything, nurse? I'm going into town. I could stop at the pharmacy, get you some cough syrup or painkillers or something. No need, Kieran. Thanks, but... I just need some rest, that's all. You sure? Because that's no bother. Not at all. I'll be fine. Well, okay. But give us a shout if you need anything, yeah? Because, uh, I, um... We're all... Worried about you, nurse. You're not still upset about... You know, when I pushed you? Because I was really drunk at the time, and I just fucking... <sighs> snapped. But, that was not cool. And I know that. And I'm sorry. Well, I tried. Go ahead. Play the fucking victim if that's your decision. 
It's not like it matters that I'd almost died in Father Rob's dungeon. And yet, that didn't stop me from saving your ass in that stupid forest, did it? But fine. Suit yourself. I'm out of here. There's no such thing as a bad sandwich, really. It don't matter what you put on it. Still make for a hearty meal. But... I'm an old man. I know what I like, and I know what I don't. And nothing beats a good old ham and mustard, if you ask me. Well, I can make you one, if you're hungry. Not now, dear. I'm alright. It's just... good to have you back, you know? That's very sweet of you, George. Thank you. But... I should be looking after you, not the other way around. Oh, I can still do more than everyone thinks I'm capable of. The truth is, I don't even need a carer. But Sarah insisted, and I just didn't want to fire. I wouldn't fight her either. She can kill people with just her eyes. But it's been nice having you around. You never shout at me. You give me sandwiches. And you're, you're good company. I like you, Angie. And helping you when you're sick is the least I can do. It won't be long before your regular care is back. God, no. We almost forgot about Stinky Joyce. I didn't realize she had a nickname. Oh, yeah. She smells so weird, I swear. She really does. And I'm not even sensitive to smells or anything. I'm a bloody farmer, for God's sake. I've been around cows all my life. And let me tell you, dear, cows don't smell like daisies. <laughs> That's for sure. But the smell Joyce has on her, it's like... Oh, I don't know. It's like chemicals. For some reason, I can't stand it. It really bothers me. I should get back to work. Tell me what needs to be done, George. Oh, well, I would like to ask you a favour, actually. Yeah? What is it? Just uh, come to the living room. And uh, grab that bag of crisps on the way, would you? Sit down, and pass the crisps. The film's about to start. A film? Yes, an American one. So sit down, put your feet up, make yourself comfy. Oh, I've watched it before, but that's okay. It's one of those movies you can keep watching again and again. Where's Jenny? She's become a basement dweller lately. Whatever her problem is, she don't want to share it with me. And I don't intend to pry. Oh, come on. There's plenty of room. Just get on that bloody door. Well, they'd both fall in the water if he did that. But she could just scooch over or something. I swear, it feels like she just wants him to freeze to death.
never been this sick before. We should call an ambulance. Or maybe I'll drive her to the hospital myself. It'll be faster that way. No, Kieran. No? What good will that do? This cancer is killing her. But there's no cure or treatment that'll make her better. If she goes to the hospital, they'll pump her full of morphine. And leave her to die among strangers. What sort of death is that? I don't know, George. I just don't know anything anymore. What would she want? We know what she doesn't want. And that's hospitals. She told me. And as bad as it is to watch her suffer like this, we'll make sure she stays here. With us. Till the end. After all, we're the only friends she's got. some vegetable soup. I know you're not hungry, but you should eat something. You'll feel better with nice hot soup in your tummy. Holy shit, not this again. It's all right, darling. We'll try again later, yeah? This hammer won't do it. If only had a squadron of tanks. Oh, the hammer will do. Just fine. You'll see. This is pathetic, Jenny. You can't open this. The sooner you realize it, the better for all of us. Oh, what do you know? You're just a grumpy dying woman that stinks of piss.
You don't want to do this, Jenny. There's a monster. I know. Why do you think I've been trying to open it? But it won't. No, it won't. It's my monster, and it will do as I say. It will destroy you the minute you set it free. Well, there's only one way to find out. This door needs a password to open, and I happen to know it. You're shitting me? You've known it all this time, and you've never told me. You never asked. Well, I'm asking now. Tell me. What's the damn password, Angie? Open sesame. M what? Say it. Okay. Open sesame. Oh god, I can't believe you actually said that. So it's not the password then? Of course not. I was just kidding. Um, you know, you're a real weirdo, Angie. The worst fucking kind. Hey, would you like a cigarette? You know I don't smoke. But didn't you ask me for a cigarette the other night? Yeah, well, I smoke occasionally when I'm drunk or high. But I'm neither now, so... I can get you a drink. Just look at this place. There's booze everywhere. Um, I guess. You carry on hammering on that door. I'll get you a little something to help you out, yeah? Ah, uh, why not? I never say no to a glass of wine. What see me it is then? Jenny?
Jenny? Are you in there? You got me. Damn, girl! You should have seen your face! You went all... Ah! And then you did the... Are you done? And anyway, what are you lurking in the dark like that for? Well, I finally opened the door, and let me just tell you, that fucker took some serious beating. But then, I couldn't put the lights on. I mean, I found a switch, and I flipped it, but it did fuck all. And then, five minutes later, I saw you come in with your flashlight. Great timing, Angie. As usual. No light, huh? Clearly, there's no power here. Let's see if we can fix that. Lead on then, light bearer. I will be right behind you. A generator. Do you know how to fix generators? No. But I think it's all about connecting ignition wires to correct spark plugs. I literally have no idea what any of that means. Just shut up and let me think. It can't be that hard. Ouch! You okay? I think he did something. Keep going, girl! That's it. Just a little bit more. Who the fuck are you? You don't know. Of course you don't. Five years working my ass off on this stinking stupid farm and you won't even mention my name, will you? Typical. I'm Angie. George's Carol. Oh, yes. The agency nurse. Oh, you guys are the worst. And who's a skinny bitch behind you? It's Jenny Wilde. Angie, what the fuck? The actress? Oh, no, no. Uh, same name. Just a coincidence. <laughs> you are her. I might be crippled, but I'm not blind. Fucking hell. You got any more celebs hiding in there? Mariah Carey? George Clooney? No. Oh, should I check? 
It's just the two of us. Can we go now? Please? Not really. No. I'm guessing you are George's regular carer? Joyce, is that right? Well, I sure as hell ain't Cinderella, darling. You did such a great job looking after George all these years. He's very fond of you. I doubt it. You're not really the kind of person who'd murder two innocent people in cold blood like this, why are you? No, you're right. I'm a cook. I'd rather not have blood on my hands if I can avoid it. So I'll just call the boys. The boys? They'll know what to do. Now, get in there and remember. I don't want to do it, but I'll shoot you if you leave me no choice. Enjoy your stay. Oh, so fucked. Hey, can we at least get high while we wait for the boys? Oh, come on. This totally fucking sucks. Got any bright ideas? Not yet. But in my experience, the best ideas are often the simplest ones. Generator. I'm not gonna wait for the boys. I'll fucking deal with it myself. Jenny?
should have run while you could. I really hoped you wouldn't see the end of Burnhouse Lane. This last house. This smoldering fortress of death itself. It will be your grave. You're hurt. What happened to you? I tried to catch a little spider. To leave him as a present on your doorstep. But he was quick. He stunned me. Poisoned me. And now I'm dying. Sorry. I really hoped I could spare you that one last fight. Why would you do all that for me? Does every act of kindness need a reason? I simply chose you, Angie, to love and protect. But why? There's nothing special about me. I'm not that brave or kind. I don't have a great sense of humor, the looks, or the wits. I'm not even a very good nurse. Feeding poor George sandwiches every day and hardly caring for him at all. Don't you think there's someone more worthy out there, waiting for an opportunity like this? I've never been a perfect cat either. Fussing over food, sharpening my claws on things I shouldn't be touching. But none of that matters, Angie. It's something you people often forget about. True love is unconditional. And if I could, I'd take that magic cigarette out of your pocket and smoke it myself. But alas, cats can't smoke. You've been a good friend. Thank you. All of this would have been a lot harder without you. I couldn't really save you from the horrors of Burnhouse Lane. But I think I gave you a good enough reason to go on, didn't I? You did make me do some crazy shit, if that's what you mean. And here you are, standing tall. Ready for your final fight. Is there anything I can do? For me, no. But you can still save yourself. You went through hell to complete your tasks. You earned your prize. You found the box and the cigarette. So, use it. Don't let it go to waste. Keep on living. Isn't that what you wanted? I haven't made my choice yet. It's now or never, Angie. I hope you realize that. It's not so simple. There's no black or white. It's all shades of grey. There isn't anyone that's truly evil in my life. Except Bloody Mary, perhaps. If she somehow came back to life and asked for a smoke, I wouldn't hesitate for a second. But she's dead, so... Goodbye, Cat. I'll see you on the other side.
feel anything at all. I've faced my biggest fears and I've conquered them all. What else is there to be afraid of? I'm ready. Hey, look who's up. You gotta try this shit, Angie. Um, what? This stuff is amazing. No wonder that pervy old vicar wanted it so badly. What's going on? Are we all friends now? Oh, right. You were unconscious, I think, when Joyce fell down the stairs? You'd never. Guess what happened? It turned out the door to our cell was super shit. I gave it a kick and bang! It just opened. I helped Joyce up, we talked, and then we just... How do you guys say it? Um, we got on like a house on fire. <laughs> Does that mean we're free to go? It's not my call. The boys will decide. But to be honest, I really don't like the look of you, Missy. You'll call the cops first chance you get, won't you? No, I won't. Ask Jenny. She knows I can be trusted. Yeah? What do you reckon, Jenny? Is Nurse Angie a blabbermouth? I think, um... I don't want to say it, but... Yeah. She'll tell everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Nurse Angie is as fun as a dry mop. Darling. All right, boys. I see. We have rats in the lab. The blonde one's cool. She's not gonna... A rat is a rat. So let me deal with this, yeah? Yeah. Sure. You. You like our product. I... I can see it all over your face. Was it good? You enjoy it? Y yes sir. Of course you did! It's the best! But it's expensive stuff. Very expensive. Especially when dirty fucking rats stick their dirty fucking noses into it. You know what I mean? Is what we'll do. We'll keep the blonde for now. She kind of reminds me of someone. I want to try something on her. Oh, come on, mate. You promised you wouldn't do any of that. Let's get rid of the grumpy face first. You there, behind him. Come forward. Take her to the garden, Johnny. Really? What is your problem now? It's freezing out there. Can't we just do it here and be done with it? Johnny. We do it here. We're gonna have blood all over the equipment. And we don't need that shit right now, do we? Come on, off you go. Let's get this done before the old man wakes up. Fine. Put your hands up so I can see them. Good. No go. Move it.
Go on. You know where the garden is. Don't try running, yeah? I told you not to run! Go on, you know where the garden is. Don't try running, yeah? That's enough. You can stop. Don't turn around. And no funny business. So, um... Do you have any last wishes or something? I'd like to have one last cigarette. Oh, come on. We don't have time for that. Do you smoke? Here, have one with me. We've smoked a whole pack on the way here. But... Ah, fuck it. Just one more won't hurt, eh? Eh? You care about your looks, don't you? I bet you do. Well, how about we take them away? A bit of uh, sulfuric acid should do the job. What do you reckon, Joyce? I'm gonna turn her into a fucking zombie. Mate, that's a bit much. I did not sign up for this kind of shit. You caused this shit! You've been careless and left the lab open for everyone to see. Yes, but I said, come on. That's really fucked up, isn't it? Can't we just give her a slap and let her go? She won't tell. It would ruin her if she did. You're pissing me off, Joyce. You really are. You think you have a say in this, because you know how to cook this shit. Well, you're wrong. It won't take me long to train someone else. 
So fuck off upstairs if you really don't want to look. I'd prefer that, to be fair. Your ugly mug cuts me off every time I catch sight of it. Don't leave me, Joyce. You won't... Oh, will you just shut the... Arsehole. Nice job. You're alive? Yeah, sort of. Where's Johnny? Johnny's... Well, he's incapacitated. Sleeping in the garden, but it won't last long. Oh, he'll run away when he wakes up, the little coward that he is. I don't think we'll ever see him again. Why did you help us? Let's just say, I've had a change of heart. Can you walk, Jenny? I, uh... I think he broke my ribs with that kick. We'll give you a hand. Grab her, nurse, and do it fast. Let's get the fuck out of here before this bald fucker wakes up. can kill you all! Shut that door, nurse! Let's trap the bastard in there! Now block it! He can rot to death in that lab for all I care! We did it. We're safe now, aren't we? I'd say so. I know this lab like the back of my hand. There is no other way out. He can survive in there for a while, but in the end, he'll just starve to death. So, we basically murdered him. Great. Oh well, I'm not gonna miss him. Are you? Speaking of murder, I could really murder a nice cup of tea right now. It's agreed. No ill feelings, no regrets. We'll simply never talk about any of this to anyone. Totally. I want to leave it all behind me as soon as possible. Oh, I keep wondering, you know, why the hell do all those assholes always pick on me? I'm so fucking sick of it. Clearly the universe is trying to tell you something. Yeah, stop taking drugs with strangers. Fuck, universe. Doesn't know what it's like to be me. And what's so hard about being you? Is the bed made of diamonds a bit too hard for your back? Fuck off, Angie. Just... Fuck off. I've gotta be honest. I'm really not gonna miss you when I leave this place. Hmm. It's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No need. I don't think I'll miss you either. Jenny. 
How about a cigarette before we say goodbye? But why? You hate my guts, and I've just told you to fuck off. I've offered you a cigarette, Jenny, not one of my kidneys. Besides, you're leaving soon, and I don't want us to part as enemies. I only smoke when I'm drunk. You know that. After a night like this, one little cigarette won't kill you. Oh, give her a break. She could barely walk a minute ago. Jenny, didn't you have a broken rib or something? It's better now. And? Angie's right. It has been a crazy night. No doubt about it. Ugh. Yeah, I guess I'll have one. Let's go outside then. Do we have to? It's freezing out there. Especially you with your nasty cough. Should stay away from the cold. I'll be fine. And my cough? Well... I have a feeling it should clear up soon. Oh, look at all these cuties. Lined up like little soldiers. Got a light?